Hey there, Curious Gamers, Zacharoni here, and throughout the last seven months when I started my channel, I discovered that there are some games that I couldn't do a let's play with, maybe because of licensing issues, or maybe that they are so overwhelming that it takes you more than a few months to watch them all. So I decided to play a few games behind my channel, and sometimes take a break from doing recording sessions. But what games have I been playing behind my channel, you might ask? Well then, allow me to show you my quick thoughts about them one by one. So let's get started, shall we? Windjammers 2 So this started on the last Saturday of January 2022, where I usually go to my gaming hangout, and I want to pick a game where I can play with my friends. So I checked the calendar for what would release, and I found a new game from Street of Rage 4 developer Dompnot. Windjammers 2, which by the way I haven't played the first game from SNK, is a one-on-one -on -one frisbee game where each player attacked on scoring points in their opponent's area, and while each character played differently from one another, with stages that have their own conditions like multiple scoring points, obstacles, and then this one stage that can change how many points you get when you score, it was just too complicated for us to master. I mean, we did have a blast playing it, but we couldn't pull off some of the fundamentals like lob shot, curve shot, drop shot, roll smash, and here's a good one, reversal, plus single player content is limited, with an only arcade mode that provides you to get good with online opponents later. Oli Oli World Now, here's something funny, which is not. I was about to post Oli Oli World on my channel and share my reactions, but after posting the first video, other videos were constantly getting copyright strikes because the soundtrack of this game is licensed by other artists that were released before the game was in development. So that was a kick in the egg bag, but aside from that, I really enjoyed this game. Well, casually actually, I'll get to that in a minute. Tricks are simple to pull off by rotating the analog stick in any direction before releasing it. Grind rails are snappy to land on by holding down the analog stick. And the art style looks delicious. I mean, have you not seen the resident with ice cream for hair? Oh, it's so yummy. Um, anyway, while the main story can be beaten in seven hours, there are also high scores to beat that earned you extra clothing to customize your character but I just couldn't find myself returning to this game because I'm not that skill enough to beat the high scores. But hey, at least it's on my list of worlds to live in if I die and probably be terrible at skateboarding there. Elden Ring Well, of course I'm playing Elden Ring. You think I'm missing out on one of the most received games of 2022? Well, you're wrong, my friend. Though, admittedly, it was hard to get in at first because of how, obviously, hard it is to beat some of the bosses. But then in the realization, I discovered that I need to explore the whole world to discover hidden abilities to give you a fighting chance in these fights. For example, I discovered this one ability that can make enemies lose a lot of health after a few hits. And then there's the summon abilities that can bring a pack of wolves to distract them, allowing me to do a couple of blows before backing out. So yeah, I'm getting addicted to this game. Although, I haven't beaten the main objective yet because I'm playing this game on a daily basis. But I'm hoping I'll complete this by the end of the year, and it might be one of my favorite games of 2022. Patrick Parabox. What's that? You haven't heard of it? Well then, allow me to introduce you to one of the most underrated gems of this year. I discovered this one from an Easy Allied video where I want to play something to lower my Elden Ring rage. And thus we have Patrick Powerbox, a top-down puzzle game where I can enter another reality where the camera zooms in to see another puzzle that is connected to one another. So one moment I would be solving one puzzle where I need to push them into squares, only for that square to be the area that I'm in right now. And while the first few puzzles start off simple, they start to develop into head stretchers that force me to experiment and backtrack. Speaking of backtrack, there are extra levels in the game that keep me occupied, but luckily, I only need to complete the ones that are connected with a line that keeps shrinking to the next set of puzzles that are still satisfying to complete. So I won't be 100% in this game. Don't want to double burn myself out while playing Elden Rings. River City Girls Zero so, after the end of River City Girls, I might have said that I'll be playing it prequel, River City Girls Zero, and post it on the channel. 
But then suddenly I stopped recording and rage quit this game entirely. Now I'm aware that this is a port of a 1994 title that I'm not going to waste time pronouncing it. But if I was 15 years old in 1994, I would probably be like myself in the present day because of its frustrating gameplay. From the awful hit detection to attacks that have shorter range and enemies can do a combo breaker after you land your first hit on them. Oh and at first I liked the idea of switching between characters but then I discovered that if one of your characters go down then you have to start that level again from the beginning. <laughs> Move developers. So yeah, I was surprised that I disliked this game given that the story gave me a reason to play which I find surprisingly dark compared to what to come in the main title. Plus I think way forward should have added some better features like a rewind feature instead of a save feature that constantly put me back to the main menu. Point P. Now, Netflix have been taking some questionable actions that left the company in a lot of troublesome situations, mostly the animated community. But the one element they are focusing on, and hopefully not too much, is the gaming market on mobile devices, where you can get games that are licensed by them for free with no ads and fees. If you got a Netflix account, of course. And while I tried a bunch of titles like Bowling Ballers and Card Blast, Coin P was the standout of the pack, where the objective needs you to collect fruit to make smoothies for your giant pet companion, while avoiding enemies and fruits that you don't want along the way. Which you might say is a cash grab free to play endless jumper, but this one has a final final that is worth the pick up and play experience. Oh, and you are also rewarded with an enjoyable cutscene at the end, which I'll not spoil, but you'll just look it up anyway if you're not convinced. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Now, saying my quick opinions about the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe might spoil the experience, so if you haven't played it yet, I'll give you a quick visual lay of what you are dealing with. <coughs> a man walks into a room and saw two sandwiches, one cheese and ham, and the other tuna salad. Then he moves to the next room and found an elevator and an exhalator. And then he moves on up and found himself in a room with three doors on each wall with a number printed on each one of them. That was in 2013. Now the Ultra Deluxe added new features like a sandwich that had bacon and egg on it, a set of stairs to move on up, and a fourth door number behind him. Um, you know what, maybe that's a little too complex to say really, so let's just say the Ultra Deluxe got me laughing in unexpected ways and it feels like a sequel that never ends, even though it bundles in with the same game I played before. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge Admittedly, I didn't grow up with the Ninja Turtles, mainly because they didn't feature on channels that keep me constantly glued to like CITV, CBBC, Cartoon Network, and Toon Disney. Although we used to call them Hero Turtles in the UK before we realized that ninjas are a big deal in the media now. Luckily though, I managed to know the franchise reputation from its 2012 series and fan videos where I learned that it was one of the best beat-em-up series to date. So when I heard that Streets of Rage 4 developer Dontnot, who also made Windjammers 4 that I mentioned earlier, is making this one, I just had to play with my friends at my gaming hangout, and it was worth it. It may be short, lasting around two and a half hours, but it was an insane experience that we have with this game. Each attack impact feels beefy, special moves are easy to pull off, and taunting plays a vital role in refilling your super gauge. Though if you want my advice, just play this game with friends because you get few enemies on the screen if you play on your own. Which makes sense, but you are better off with friends to have a Calabunga experience. So yeah, those are the games I've been playing behind my channel, and if my opinions are not that believable, then sorry. Sometimes reading what I want to say is hard to do, okay? Especially trying to stay in character. That's why I prefer to do less plays. So check back with me later for more Let's Play action while still staying in character here at Live and Let Gaming. See ya, curious gamers.